this transaction happens in deep COVID, right. we know that people from Canada haven't been able to come to the U.S., people from the U.S. haven't been able to go to Canada. So what was your plan? This is the plaintiff, Tracy Parrish. She says she purchased a puppy dog, Pug, from the defendant who lives in Canada. And when she tried to cross the border, the authorities wouldn't allow her into the country. She's been unable to get her puppy and wants the defendant to refund the $950. She's now out. This is defendant Christopher Kingsfield. He says the plaintiff told him her best friend's husband was a guard at the border and purchased a puppy from him. It's not his fault the plaintiff's guard friend couldn't facilitate the transfer of the dog. He did nothing wrong and refuses to give a refund. He's accused of causing puppy problems. The defendant has bought a counter suit for $5,040.03 for travel costs, vet bills, and puppy care. All parties, please raise your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Million in our forum, the People's Court. People's Court is now in session and the Honorable Judge Marilyn Million is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Ms. Parrish, talk to me. What happened? Well, I was on Facebook and um, I belong on some pug pages and seen that Corey had some chihuahua pug mix that was pregnant and um, I noticed that he lived not far from me in Canada so I reached out to him to purchase one of the puppies and he agreed and he let me pick the puppy I wanted I wanted the runt and um, and and when it became time I kept asking him when I could give him a deposit because he agreed to come to the border to meet me so we could trade her off at the border but it How much in total out. did you pay him in order to get the dog? It's $950 total. All right. At some point, was it ever discussed whether the puppy was going to be delivered to America or whether you were to go pick up the puppy in Canada? Like, was anything, did anybody ever talk about anything? Because this transaction happens in deep COVID. Right. We know that people from Canada haven't been able to come to the U.S. People from the U.S. haven't been able to go to Canada. So what was your plan? Right. Well, I called the border and discussed it with them, and they said that it wouldn't be a problem, that we could meet at the border and pass it off. So we did that. When I, you say I you agreed. called the border, who did you talk to at the border? I have no idea who it was. I, it was just somebody in Canada. All right, so you guys and, make a plan, and, and uh, you go over to the border to meet on what day? Right around Valentine's Day, the 13th, 14th. All right, and then what February. happens? February. Um, I went into the office on the U.S. side right. and spoke to them, and they they told me to walk over to the Canada side and speak with them, that they would allow me to get the puppy. So when I got over there, they met me outside, and they said that Corey and his girlfriend were in the building at, with the puppy, but they weren't going to allow them to hand the puppy off to me. So, and that I needed to return to the U.S. Wow. And, okay. Yeah. So. What was your plan? Uh, I've heard her plan. What was your plan, Mr. Kingsfield? Uh, my plan for delivering of the puppy was all based on what uh, Tracy had told me. Um, I had left the due diligence up to Tracy. Said, Why, though? It's your, you, you have to deliver something you sold. What was your plan? It's kind of like, yeah, we'll figure it out. You know, what was the plan? You know, play it by ear at the border. Like, what was the plan? You sold her an item, and it's typically up to the seller to deliver the goods. If the seller doesn't deliver the goods, the seller returns the money. But you didn't make a plan to deliver the goods, and you kept her money. You didn't return her money when everything went south. Why should you be able to keep the money and the dog? What happened that day at the border, and what other efforts did you make to get the buyer's purchase to the buyer? So at the border that day, I did everything that we had discussed 
Um, and as far as why she didn't get her money back then and there, um, if you look at the times that she sent me the money, if she wanted her money back, why did she send me more money after the puppy wasn't able to get across the border? Uh, this is why. I'm looking at why she sent you more money. I, 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 how were the agents, did they feel bad? Were they um, on your side and the Canadian side, Mr. Kingsfield, were they, what were they saying to you about it? Uh, they were, uh, for lack of better terminology, they were quite heartless. They didn't care. They didn't care how cute PV was. <laughs> um, I think you guys thought you would get away with it because of the cuteness factor. Because I saw some text to, oh, that dog is so cute. They'll just let it happen. And, but it it eh. doesn't work that way, <laughs> right? Doesn't work that way. Um, so what efforts then did you make to get the puppy uh, in the ensuing weeks and months, apparently, after that? Oh, my goodness. I had uh, numerous um, ideas of getting her over. And at the time when he was with his girlfriend, um, she kept, t she would say, Oh, I'm not going to allow you to do that. I don't want to put her in danger. Well, put I her paid in danger for the puppy. How? Wait, what, wait, what was going to put no. her in danger? What idea? Well, I had a friend that owns a trucking business okay. and they are a courier that helps you get things across the border. But his girlfriend said, no, she wasn't going to allow uh, the puppy to just be passed off to anybody. Meaning the truck? And I told her, yeah, she wasn't going to pass her off to anybody except for me, apparently. All right. Well, uh, so what happens? When do things break down? Because I know that things went south between him and his girlfriend, correct? Correct. And she took yes, Pee-wee. Well, she took Pee-wee and wouldn't let him have her. Um, they were fighting physically. He was sending me pictures of him and in the hospital. And it's like, I, I didn't want to be disrespectful to him, but I didn't want to lose my way of trying to get my puppy still. So I tried to stay neutral between the two of them. And, um, and then she went and got a restraining order against him. So then I have to be careful and not be a third party and for them to communicate between each other. And, um, but she ended up having the puppy and wouldn't let him have her. And he had made her out to be some kind of monster. And it's like, well, can't you get Pee Wee and hold on to her? And, um, she just so wouldn't. So who has she the puppy wouldn't... now? I have the puppy now. She's mine. Wait, but what happened? Did you go back with your girlfriend? No. So when did she give you the puppy? Um, last month. Why? Because I asked for her. But why? won't you or your ex give the puppy to the person who paid for the puppy or make any effort to get her the puppy? At this point, there's vet bills. Um, second, <laughs> vet bills second for set of shots. dog? <laughs> <laughs> well. Exactly. The, exactly. Somebody exactly. Has, somebody has, mm. somebody Some, has to pay to look after this dog. This well, dog maybe, is now... Okay, eight. but why would, why would uh, she be responsible to pay you in vet bills for a dog you won't give her? I never said she can't get the dog. She can come get the dog anytime she wants. No, she can't. We both know that. We all know that. When, even when the sale happened, we all knew that. You have a counterclaim against her. You're not going to give her the dog, and you're suing her to pay you $5,000 more for travel costs, puppy food, vet bills, and puppy care. $3,400 for puppy care because you're caring for her puppy. I, I'm not understanding. You, you won't give her the puppy. She's come up with other ways to do it and you won't take care of it. None and of then, this ever happened though. Yeah, it never happened because you said no. No. You know what, we're done. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no, we, no, we are done, all right? And, it, it never and, happened. And the plaintiff's lawsuit against the defendant, I'm ordering you to return this lady's money, every penny that she paid you. $950 verdict for the plaintiff. And your laughable lawsuit against her <laughs> for five grand, my verdict is zero. It's a simple contracts case. It's heartbreaking. It's the worst Valentine's Day I've ever heard of, but it's a simple contracts case. Here, here's $950 for a puppy. All right, ah, <laughs> I got your puppy and your, your little dog too. And I'm not giving you the puppy. And no, that's not how it works. I know what happened. You know what happened and you know what happened. You bonded and you want the puppy and everybody loves the puppy. The puppy's very well loved and well cared for. Get back your $950 and go find a different puppy. $950 verdict for the plaintiff. Thank you. Mr. Kingsfield, obviously you can't be surprised at the outcome of this case. I am a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Tell me why. Well, 
it's not the cute, lovable little puppy that it was in those pictures that the judge showed. It's now a dog. Um, so it's not worth the original money that it originally was. If I was to give Tracy a full refund, um, it, it, it's just not, it's not right. It's not fair. Um, she's not entitled to a full well, refund. Look, Plus I had to pay for all the vet, vet expenses. Well, a lot of people would argue with that and say that you're not right. That a dog that is six months old, if it's still cute, it's still, you can still sell it. And for maybe even more money, who knows? Bottom line, you got to give $950 back. And I hope the puppy, which you have, turns out to be a great friend for a long time. Good luck with him. Ms. Parrish, uh, kind of a struggle for you. You're not going to get that puppy. It's pretty obvious. What do you think? I'm sad. I wanted her. I mean, kind of bonded with her through pictures and and that. But so I got me a Chihuahua puppy already. Oh, you got one. You didn't mention that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, my niece, <laughs> my niece had puppies, so I went ahead and got her. All right. Congratulations. Yes. You get your money back. Thank you. And that's fair. Thank you. Okay. Good enough. Thank you very much. Harvey, this kind of fascinating case with this dispute over the Canadian border. So, you know, Doug, there's something in the law called frustration of purpose, which basically means that if you have a contract, but you can't effectively carry out the function of the contract, the purpose of the contract, you can undo it and the person who paid money gets it back. That's really what happened here because without the dog, the contract is frustrated. Most states have a mandate that everyone must have auto insurance. Why does nothing happen once you confirm they had none? It's like telling them it's okay not to be insured. Everybody does have to have auto insurance. And in, in most states, I think it's a misdemeanor. So yeah, we go out on the street and we drive our car and we take it on faith that the other guy is insured. And maybe the penalty should be more severe in some states. In Florida, it's a ticket. you were a county court judge yeah. in Miami for years and it was just a ticket normally, right? It's a ticket for failure to have um, proof of insurance. And right. then if you show the proof of insurance, a, yeah, a lot of judges would just dismiss it without checking the date to see if you had it at the time. Uh -huh. um, but you should be checking the date. Something and even tells then, me you would check the date. I would check the date. I would check the date to see if they had it at the time. Sure. But I mean, maybe it, it should just be a crime everywhere. I agree with the. The problem is a lot of a lot of the laws that we see out there, and a lot of the way judges impose them and enforce them. They treat the rule followers, the people who do follow the rules, like chumps. And I think that's, I almost could feel the aggravation in the question from the yeah. viewer that, hey, why doesn't more stuff happen to these people? I follow the rules when nothing ever happens to the people who don't. This is the plaintiff, Rodney Carter. He says he purchased the Mercedes Benz from the defendant, and the guy's not honoring the warranty. The car needs $4,882.47 in repairs. That's just what he's suing for today. This is the defendant, Omid Eliyahu. He says the plaintiff went to another dealership and came up with a laundry list of repairs. The plaintiff refused to allow him to do the work. He wants to have his bill paid at the other dealership, and he can't seem to get the guy to understand that's not how these things work. He's accused of banging up a Benz owner. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says he bought a lemon of a Mercedes from the defendant, and it needed a ton of repairs, and he wants the money from the defendant. Now, the defendant says he took the car to the dealership to have the car repaired, and that voided the warranty. It's the case of a bad case of the Benz. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Carter, you're rep Mr. Carter, you're representing Mrs. Carter? Yes. Okay, so you bought your car from the defendant's company? Yes. And this is a 2017 Mercedes-Benz C300. Yes. All right. What went wrong? So upon driving the car home, the dashboard lit up that it needed to be serviced. So I took it back the next day. The guy tells me his name was Ronnie. He took the guy that sold me the car. I don't know who this guy is. I've never seen him before in my life. He told me that only Mercedes-Benz can take that off. They didn't have the tool to take it off. So when he told me that, he gave me guarantees, he assured me, well, promised me. There's a, a, a warranty that's your guarantee, but he told you to go to the dealership to get the, the uh, warning light turned off? 
He told me to go to Mercedes to get that turned off. It would cost me about $200. I said, that's not a problem for me. Okay, so what does Mercedes tell you? Mercedes told me that there's $4,800 worth of damage to this car. Damage? $4,800 worth of problems. Okay, well, what was the reason for the engine light, according to them? Supposedly, the car was completely serviced. But only a Mercedes Benz can take that light off the dashboard. That's why I had to take it off. Okay. So then what happened is that aside from that $200, they took the light off. But then they said, oh, by the way, there's all this other stuff wrong. And do you want us to fix it? And we'll pay us five grand and we'll fix it. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, yes. Okay. Let me hear from you, Mr. Eliyahu. Hi, Ari. Your Honor. So we offer an extended warranty to the customer as well as the New York State Lemon Law. The law does not require us to pay third party vendors. I don't think he had the work. You didn't you didn't have any work done by Mercedes Benz, did you? Other than to turn off the light, Mr. Carter? I, I, I wind up I wound up having work done by Mercedes Benz because the guy that I bought the car from, Ronnie, that works for them referred me to them. Yeah, but he referred you to Mercedes-Benz to turn off the light. He didn't refer you to them no, no, to no, honor no, the warranty. No, 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 no. When I got the paperwork from Mercedes-Benz, I took it back to Ronnie and showed him all of these damages to the car. Ronnie said, okay, well, take the car to, to Raleigh's Mercedes-Benz dealer. Is that the same place I, you had already taken the car to? No, that was the second place that I took the car to. Okay. What did you actually pay somebody to fix in your car? I paid Mercedes five hundred dollars to fix that turn. Which agency? Raleigh. Raleigh. Okay. So you paid them five hundred dollars. Why are you suing for four thousand eight hundred and eighty-two dollars? Because forty-eight hundred dollars was the was all of the stuff that was wrong with the car. Let's talk about what the Mercedes dealership said. All right, client states, turn signal left illuminated. Found left signal light on side view mirror inoperable. Replace left side view mirror turning signal. Replace three tires. I mean, you can see the tires. That has nothing to do with the defender. It's a used car that you bought. It's not something they hid from you. Replace switch That's block. That's not true. That's not true, You Your couldn't Honor. see the tires? You, you can see the tires, but the depth of the tires, you can't tell the depth of the tires. Of course you can. You the tread on the, the tire. Instrument. You can see that. Can absolutely so I see that. I would know how much the tread on the tires should be. It's not a hidden and defect. It's not a hidden defect. And That's why people have the car looked at by their own mechanic before buying it. Replace switch blocks for touchpad in center console, middle switch block only. Do you know what that is, Mr. Yes. Uh, Eliyahu? Yes, Your Honor. What so is there, that? So there's a button in uh, the middle console where you could uh, choose different items on the screen. Uh, possibly maybe the button uh, has a scratch on it or that was being requested to be replaced. Or it doesn't work. Sure. Uh, the defendant would be able to answer that question. I, I would not did, be able to answer Why that did they question. tell you that that touchpad had to be changed? Did they tell you what was wrong with it? They said it doesn't work. Okay. Is that something that's covered under the warranty, Mr. Uh, Eliyahu? If it is a safety hazard, it does include it. So is that if a safety hazard? What does that control? I, I believe it controls the radio. Uh, right now, is it working? Is your radio working in the car? Uh, did yeah, you, the radio works. Did you, I don't did have you, a problem with the radio. Listen to my question. Did you problem, ever have them? Listen up. I have a listen problem up, with buying up, three tires. Up. That's no good. Mr. That's Carter, the, the judge, everybody the judge stop asking. talking. The judge is talking. Mr. Carter, here's a question I'm asking you. What did that touchpad control? The what, Did you have that changed or you didn't have it changed? I didn't have it changed. Okay, so with your honor, may him, I say something No, you may to not. You, according to him, no? Mr. Okay. Eliyahu, he is sent to Raleigh by Ronnie. Who is Ronnie? Um, he's the finance manager. Okay, can you get him on the phone? Yes. Perfect. Let's do that. Your Honor, may I ask you? Yes. If, if I go into a store and purchase something and you tell me that this is what something is and I purchase it from you and it's a total fabrication, do, don't I have a recourse? You are attempting to rewrite what your recourse is. Your recourse is exactly what you negotiate. You negotiated a purchase of a used car with a certain type of warranty. 
you have yet to testify or even complain about something that's actually wrong with the car, other than the left light thing, um, which they and you the, did. How have. about the three tires? How about the three tires? Those that, are not the, depth, the, the tires depth, are not the part of your warranty. Does he have a warranty on the tires, Mr. Eliyahu? So basically, they Mr. just ripped me off and it's okay. It's legally on the, okay. On the, on the tires. No, you don't. I can answer okay. that. No, you so don't have you a warranty. So if you know you don't have a tires. warranty, then open your eyes when you're buying a used car and, and check And I did out. open my eyes, but right. I don't know That's the depth not a of, the, defect. of the tire. It's either part of your warranty or it's not. So no, so they, they can't can just sell you just garbage, me off, but the only thing you get to have paid by them out of their pockets is something that goes wrong that is covered by the warranty. So had he brought the uh, left lamp to your yes. place, the left mirror? Yes. Which I did. Yes. Which I did. Mr. Carter, you can't possibly think it helps for you to yell over me, do you? No, I'm not trying to yell well, over you. Well, that is what you're doing. Your so honor. I'm going to ask you okay, once well, nicely to stop. Now, Mr. I'll Eliyahu, apologize. had he brought the mirror to your place and said, hey, this mirror is malfunctioning, that would have been covered under the warranty, Right. Absolutely, Your Honor. Okay. So your defense to that is, hey, pal, bring it to us to do warranty work, right? You can't just yes, bring it to a yes, third party. And that's absolutely true. His answer to that is, Ronnie told me to bring it to rally, right? Uh, no, he said that Ronnie referred him to our service department, which said to him that they will not cover the no. other items. No, you remember he said, no, he said that Ronnie true. Did Ronnie the, refer him to rally to fix the the mirror? No. Yes, in writing. In writing? He wrote the address and everything. He, he, he wrote the address for me to take the car in his handwriting. I have proof of that. G that can he I see wrote that? that address. How much did you pay to have the mirror fixed? $500. $500 Do I have a receipt for that? A $498, I think it might have okay. been. This is this is the paper that Ronnie wrote. To OK, hold the still. Hold still a second. And according to you, that's Ron. Ronnie's handwriting where he writes rally and the phone number and the address. Yes. OK. All right. Let's get try to get Ronnie on the speakerphone. He's on the phone. OK, Ronnie. Yes. Hi. According to him, you wrote Raleigh's service department's phone number and you gave him the information to go see Raleigh. Here's the document. Can you see that, uh, Ronnie? Yeah. Okay, is that your handwriting? Looks like it, yes. Okay, darling. All right, so he did come in in person then um, because otherwise how could you have written all that on top of that form? That's a form that was created by Silver Star Mercedes after he took the car out of there. That's kind of the link that I needed. I'm good. Thank you very much, Ronnie. And here's what I'm going to do. Mr. Eliyahu, I am certainly not going to award Mr. Carter $5,000, $4,882, but I am going to award him the amount that he paid for the mirror because the mirror is something that should... He shouldn't have been sent away. So How about the for, you can color. stop talking now before I change my mind. Four hundred and ninety eight dollars <laughs> and nineteen cents verdict for the plaintiff. If anything goes wrong with that car, you are to take it to Mr. Eliyahu and tell him, is this covered? Is this not? And understand whether or not it's a covered issue. So I'm, I'm issuing a verdict in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of four hundred and ninety eight dollars and nineteen cents. That is my verdict. Good luck, folks. Mr. Yahoo, you're going to recompense him for that uh, $498. That goes back to him. And you're going to do the other items the judge said that you would take care of for him, right? Sure. And you're okay with it? Absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. Mr. Carter, what do you think now? You understand the judge's decision? And how do you feel? It's ridiculous. How is I supposed to know the depth of a tire? I don't have no instruments when I'm buying a car to know the depth of a tire. And it cost me $1,200 to go and replace three tires. That should have never been on the car in the first place. All right. Well, you get $498 back, and that will wrap up right, the case. Right, right. All right, Harvey. So, Doug, this is a used Mercedes. Brings up the point that even if somebody wants to sell you a used car as is, you can still say, uh-uh, I want a warranty. And you can style the warranty however you want. 30-day parts and labor, it can be major auto parts for a year, whatever it is you want, negotiate it. You may have to pay a little more, but it may be good in the end. What was the last rock concert you went to? Oh, my goodness. It was on the weekend of the declared pandemic. It was 
the weekend that things were going to close down, and it was the very last thing I did. And it was a Pat Travers concert right. at Ocean Reef in South go. Florida. Yeah, you no, you were out of town or something. I yeah. went with the girls. That's right. So the old school rock and roll guitar player, yeah. Pat Travers. That's right. And uh, I think maybe it's... it's we don't 25. go to a lot of concerts now. We saw a, 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 a Latin band play once, a Latino band, what was it? Grupo, Grupo Cuatro Grupo Cuarenta. Grupo Cuatro Cuarenta, that was before we were married. We've yes. been married 28 years. Yes, that's like so what 30 was, years ago. Well, like exactly when was our last right. concert. We right. need to get out more. I know, you know? right? But I, I, when I was younger, I went to all, I saw everybody. Right. I, mean, I, I saw all, the, all the, the big bands, you know, I saw the Stones and Fleetwood Mac and the Eagles. I even saw Leonard Skinner in concert. Then. There's a t-shirt we once saw somebody wearing say, that said, right. I may be old, but I saw all the great yeah, hair bands. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is the plaintiff, Frank Giuliano. He says he hired the defendant, an attorney at law, to help him recover money a construction company stole from him. He's completely unsatisfied with the defendant's work. It's been over a year and nothing has been done. He's suing for $2,850, the amount he's owed. This is the defendant, Gary Grant. He says he did a lot of work for the plaintiff and spoke to his contractor's lawyer and things were moving along. Then COVID hit and he hasn't heard from the plaintiff in 14 months. He knows his client's frustrated, but he has two years to litigate, and he just needs to be patient. He's accused of taking the money and running. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case of the docket, the plaintiff hired the defendant, a lawyer, to represent him in court and says the guy did squat. But the defendant says the wheels of justice grind slowly. And he's seeing the plaintiff's case through and the guy just has to be more patient. It's the case of you're out of order. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Giuliano, what happened? So basically on September 18th, uh, I uh, hired... Uh, Gary Grant uh, to uh, of twenty twenty of, of two thousand nineteen nineteen okay yes uh huh I hired him to uh, sue this construction company that was putting an addition on my house and they kind of screwed me over and they beat me out of about thirty to thirty five thousand dollars so anyway I hired uh, uh, Gary I met up with him at his office. I gave him a check for $3,500. And he said, okay, you got a good case and we can go uh, with that. So he right, said- Right, but what was your understanding of the agreement? Did you sign anything? I signed an agreement with Gary uh, stipulating that he's gonna uh, go after him and try to sue him in court and yada, yada and stuff like that. Do but, you have that uh, agreement? I couldn't find it. Uh, I'll be did you, honest with did you. Did you sign it? Is it your recollection you signed it? I believe I did. Um, if I, I didn't really look at it. If it's there, then Mr. I Grant, did do you it. have a signed retainer? Your Honor, <clears throat> I have an email from the client accepting the retainer language in my email, which is in the paper. So yes, in a sense, we have- What's the date of the email you want me to look at? September 20th, 2019 at 1.50 p.m. Okay, so the understanding was an hourly rate of 350 per hour plus expenses. So the 3,500 was representing 10 hours of billable time. That's correct, Your Honor. All right, so you're unhappy with his services, Mr. Grant. Tell me why you're unhappy. What happened? So basically, he took my money and, uh, you know, we agreed on this. I'm not going to say I didn't agree on it. And uh, so uh, three, four weeks go by and uh, I didn't hear anything from him. So I sent him a text because I just feel that he should have been keeping up with it. And uh, I sent to him, good morning. Um, listen, it's been a long time. Um, I don't think this is going to work. You're just too busy for me. Just please give me back my money and we'll go from there. Were you, was he ignoring your texts or your emails or? Well, I tried calling him like um, on occasions during the, the process. And being that I had his, uh, his uh, cell phone number, I figured t texting would be the best way because he would have to look so at it. So is that a yes or a no? Were you texting and yes, he wasn't and, and he was ignoring you? He was ignoring me. Okay. Yes. So you text him and you say, Good morning, Gary. I hope everything is well. I'm guessing you're much too Correct. busy 
to do with my lawsuit. This is the third week that you kept me at bay. Three Mondays in a row, you said you were going to call me, but I just guess you're just too busy. So how about you just return the check and I'll just get some other lawyer to help me out. No worries and thank you. And he Correct. responds, Frank, the letter is done. I apologize. I will call you around one if that works so we can finalize and get that out. I know you've been patient, right. but I am the right lawyer for this job. So let's get going. Thanks. You say, Gary, right, seriously, I can't afford to keep you on retainer. So can you close it out and just send me a bill, whatever's left from my retainer? And his response is, give me a week to get back to you after reaching out to the attorney. And I usually play phone tag. Thanks. Regards, Gary. Gary, seriously, I can't afford to keep you on retainer. So can you just close it out and send me a bill for whatever's left? Don't ask him for a settlement because that would cost me 500 bucks. To which your attorney, Mr. Grant, answers, no, Frank, the phone call will probably be 15 minutes, which would cost you 80 bucks. But having said that, I'm not going to charge you to make the phone call. Let me know if it's okay to call the attorney and settle for the 15,000. I got an email last week. Way later. So he says, I got an email last week, last night. He's awaiting proposed dates with his client. We'll advise. Sit tight. It's worth having a meeting before you do anything further. You say to him, do you remember, I just want to make sure you remember that you're not going to charge me extra for this. If we settle, I'll compensate you for that. What did you mean by that? Yeah, right. If we get a settlement, then I'll compensate him. If, um, if he gets me my 15, how much would I'll you compensate him? I didn't, we didn't get into that. All right. We so just, he says, if what you were that. saying, Mr. Grant responds, if what you're saying is that I'm not looking for any further fees to have the meeting, I would agree with you. That's my recollection. Thanks. What did you mean by that, Mr. Grant? Because what you have done here in court, there never was a meeting. There, um, nothing happened. So if you're saying you wouldn't charge him for that meeting and the meeting didn't take place, why then, when he sues you, are you not giving him anything back of the retainer? Your Honor, at one of my exhibits is the actual bill for services rendered, which identifies that even before the meeting, the retainer was expended. He has. Not well, then why did the you text that? that? Why did you text? That was, I, I just read a I, series of texts that don't give me. I, yes, I know you're. You have you didn't have content, contemporaneous records along with your expenditure of time, right? You created that for court. Your, this whole thing that Last shows night. I spent 0. 0.5, I spent that, you know, whatever. That's something that was created for court once he sued you, correct? Exactly. And I'm not talking there to you, to Mr. Giuliano. Well, I'm talking to Mr. Grant. You can't possibly answer that. The, there are contemporary, contemporaneous notes of the time reflected, but you're absolutely right. The bill itself was created for, the, for this proceeding because until... Eight weeks ago, I didn't know I was going to be sued. I, I, I saw a yeah. lot of handwritten notes. I never saw any that documented how much time you spent. Well, that, I didn't submit those because I just put them into the bill. But okay. that's how I... That's Do you I, have them with you now? No, I don't have them. Not, not, that's not. kind of what the case is about, though, isn't it? Isn't, isn't he saying, my foot you did? That's really his accusation against you is, no, you didn't. You didn't spend 10 hours. That's his accusation. Um, yeah. All right. Um, tell me what you did in the case. Okay, absolutely. Uh, after speaking with him, I believe he came back to my office one other time because I had some questions. Uh, and then I prepared. First, I did the legal research, which we had sent him the four cases that I felt were relevant. And then I prepared the demand letter, at which time we engaged in attempting to have the... Uh, but why didn't settlement. it happen? Why didn't, why didn't a, a conference happen in two years? Statute of limitations is ticking, right? But, Your Honor, in fairness, if you look at the emails, there are numerous, I would say 20 emails or more between counsel and I. And then at one point in one of the emails where he says on August 2nd, I can reach out to him, but I know he does not want to settle. From the beginning, your client, that he had successfully sued other contractors in the past and that he was going to sue Bob too. And the only reason the job was not completed was because your client fired Bob. Consequently, I do not understand where your client thinks he is going with this case. So, Mr. Giuliano, tell me what communication you've had with your attorney since the pandemic hit. So basically, the last text I said to him was, hey, Gary, it's been more than two weeks since we spoke. You said you get a final bill out to me. Can you please send me this so we can get back together? If I don't hear from you in a week, I'm going to report you to the bar. You never, ever sent me one bill. I did it before to, divor to a divorce lawyer who screwed me, and I'll do it again. I have no problem at all. 
It's only a form letter and 50 bucks. And he said, Frank, I hope you and your family are well. I received your text messages, which are really unnecessary because, as I mentioned previously before, we were ordered to stay home by governor's executive order. Frank, I just sent you an email, the attorney, and that was the email he was talking about. And then after that, that was it. So the last message I got from him was April 1st of, of 2020. This year. 2020. 20, yeah. See, it says it right there on the phone. And I told him, just give me my bill. And he never, ever sent me one bill acknowledging anything. He just strung me along. Mr. Grant, can I ask you why in two years you never, ever accounted with the client for the 10 hours? The simple reason was we had agreed from the beginning I was not going to go to court. So at the my my plan was, and he was aware of it. You're not answering me, though, because the question that I'm asking you is on numerous occasions that we've read already out loud, he says... Cut, I want to cut my losses. That's it. Send me an accounting and 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 give me the excess. On numerous occasions in your text, you represent to him, "Hey, I'm you know for whatever this meeting's gonna, I'm not even gonna charge you. So just let me let me try to settle it for you. Relax, and I won't even charge you for that part of it. That part of it never happens. Um, and then all of a sudden, oh, what are you talking about? I used up the whole thing. It just because it kind of doesn't fit. You see and. Um, Your Honor, it bothers me. It, it does bother me. Of course, you bother me too, Mr. Giuliano, uh, uh, su- suggesting that the work we have talked about is worth $650. I don't know what planet I you're felt, on when you say that. I felt a couple hours because when I left the office. Okay, I don't want to hear anymore. Stop talking. Everybody home. just stop talking. We're done. I'm going to estimate what I think it was worth. And this is underscores the importance, particularly when a client is asking to get an accounting of how much time you've spent on it, of giving a client an accounting. You keep implying that you haven't used up the 10 hours in these texts. And then all of a sudden, when he sues you, you used up the 10 hours. I'm ordering the defendant to pay the plaintiff back the sum of $1,000. That's my judgment. So the plaintiff prevails, he's going to get $1,000 back, not the $2,850 he had been suing for. Mr. Grant, the attorney, what's your reaction to the judge's decision? I worked hard for this gentleman, and unfortunately, he doesn't feel that way. Let me ask you, the interesting, you're in your office. What's the, what's the picture behind you, over your shoulder? <laughs> I tell people it's, Al, it's uh, Thomas Edison, but I really don't know. But you're not sure. <laughs> okay. No, I really well, don't know. sorry about that. The judge... Judge is found against you in this case. Uh, Mr. Giuliano, what happens now? I mean, he's not your attorney anymore on this case. I'm personally else working on this case? Oh, how do you think that's going to go? Well, I've sued a bunch of people in the past, and normally I do win because I wouldn't sue somebody if I felt that I couldn't win. Well, good good luck. Okay, you are getting $1,000 back there, so you've prevailed here. All right, so congratulations. Harvey? Doug, one way of getting your money quick, call the state bar and file a complaint. What would you be doing if you couldn't do any more with the law? If I couldn't continue working in the law in some respect after about 33 or so years of just the law, <laughs> uh, what would I do? So I'm, what am I qualified for outside the law? I'm thinking water slide tester maybe something like that water slide yeah. tester I mean, that's something i could really you know <laughs> sink your teeth yeah. into <laughs> so that's a career i could sink my teeth into what would you want to do if you weren't doing the law uh well what i would want to do i'd want to do more writing but since i've only published uh, articles in newspapers twice in uh, the last 15 or 20 years <laughs> i'm not sure i'm not sure that i'm, I'm that inspired and i'm going to be able to crank out the work so uh right now um I like the job I got. Yeah.